Right, but you said you said right that there is no physical evidence for creation, but that's not even true. Yes, it is. Or, or you you now have you have the floor. Tell us what the evidence for creation is. There are many of them, as I stated earlier, from excavation digs. There's also also the account of the ark. There's also Mount Sinai, which, which is so Which black. account of which the ark? Account, I mean, they've found the ark 40 times now, and none of them have actually found the ark. And by the way, finding an old the boat... the Ark of the Covenant, and, which and, was in, in Israel's, um, in Israel's yeah. economy wow. in terms of the sanctuary and all that. Wow. They found yeah, it you, in Indiana Jones, <laughs> the first movie, too. This is not... I'm not even about the Indiana Jones. This is from studying it. Myself. Yeah, no. <laughs> and there's you also really, really need Mount, to check. To, you Mount really Sinai need to double check so the. Excuse so I'm sorry. Black. Wait, go ahead. What, so Mount Sinai, what? Mount, there's Mount Sinai, which the Bible says became smoke when God came into contact with it. Okay, so so what? How so, does that. How do, what does the existence of Mount Sinai have to do with the truth of the Genesis and account of creation? Well, I'm, no, what I'm saying is you said that there's no biblical account. Or any, sorry, there's no physical ex uh, examples for creationism, but there... What does Mount is, Sinai have to do with creationism? No, I'm saying that the state of condition of Mount Sinai now is, relates to what happened when God came down upon Mount, Mount Sinai. Okay, first of all, first of all, first of all, that is asinine, but what does it have to do with creationism? What I'm trying to say is that if Mount Sinai is in this condition that it is now, based on what was said in the Bible, then it proves it to be true. No. Wow. Okay. How did you demonstrate that Mount Sinai is in a, in, in a state that is necessarily the result of God coming down to it? How did you prove that scientifically? Be okay. One, there, has, there have been uh, shows done upon it. A show's done. <laughs> uh, well, okay, documentaries. Documentaries, wow. Yeah, I know for a fact, at least one of the documentaries, just getting back to the Ark, at least one of the documentaries uh, about the, the discovery of Noah's Ark showed a piece of wood that was fabricated by a skeptic who was approached by filmmakers uh, to, to make this thing. And what he did is he took a piece of railroad tie and various household ingredients, including teriyaki sauce, and he soaked this piece of wood in those things and then handed it over to the filmmakers who were just not interested in where he got it or how he made it look like that. They were only interested that it looked good, and then they put it in their show and said, this is a piece of the of uh, of Noah's Ark. But, but yeah, I, Noah's I'm more, Ark. I'm more interested. And that and that skeptic got an award from a skeptical organization for pulling off that stunt. But ignoring the Ark, I'm in, I'm interested in this thing. You you're saying that Mount Sinai is currently in a condition <laughs> that can only be explained by God actually coming down to Mount Sinai. And you think that this is scientific? Because listen. No, no, no. When things, when things are burnt, they're left in a charred state. Okay, that but burning state, does not planting. prove God came down. Because that is, how can you explain a mountain top that big? There we go. Like that? There we go. Now we are to the core reason that you have bought into every moronic claim that you've presented today. And the answer is one great big argument from ignorance. The mountain is in this state. How else can you explain it other than that God came down? That's a logical fallacy. It, it demonstrates that you have no basis for saying this. It is in no way scientific. You are basically saying, the mountain's here. Um, it looks like once upon a time it was smoky. That's consistent with the Genesis account. Nobody's got a better explanation. Therefore, that's what I'm going to believe. I can't begin to explain just how unscientific and dangerous that is. That is how we have come up with every wrong-headed, moronic, asinine belief that we've ever had. Oh, right. lightning bolts, they must, I don't, can't think of a better explanation. This guy down the street says they must come from Zeus, therefore I'm going to believe that they come from Zeus. And it's, you know, ooh, we did some investigation and we found out that we can direct them with, you know, little rods. If we stand there and chant to Zeus, he'll strike us with lightning. I mean, it's, it's that type of thing. You are saying Mount Sinai looks like it got burnt and therefore the biblical account is true. That is not following the evidence. 
that is leading the evidence. And when you follow that up with, can you come up with a better explanation? You have just committed one of the most painfully obvious logical fallacies of all time. It's an argument from ignorance that because somebody doesn't have another explanation, therefore yours is viable. And I'm sorry, that's just not the way reality works. Yeah. You still have to prove that the God actually came down and did that burning. So even if it's from a biblical account, that's not good enough, right? Correct. Correct. And, 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 and you already know this because do you accept the accounts of what happens in other uh, religious books? Do you accept, you know, claims about the Prophet Muhammad? Do you accept, you know, the, the birth of Buddha? Do you accept any of those claims, the miracle claims from other competing religions around the world? You, they have no, no, no better or worse evidence than what you have for yours. I mean, if, if that's what you want to believe, because we've gone into it. it it's, not, it's not. No, hold okay. on. No, you it. hold on. <laughs> this is not about what you want to believe. What you want to believe, as I've been trying to explain, is completely irrelevant. What I'd like to believe is true is completely irrelevant to what's actually true. And the difference between you and us is that we care whether our beliefs are true, and you care whether or not what you believe is what you want to believe. Okay, here's, here's the thing. We really should move on. Yeah, we're going to move on after this, so get your last shot. Okay, in. all right. My, my last point about it is, is that you know, early on, you said in the show that it's not right to uh, violate someone for their rights. And, you know, I realized today that evolution has its way. I'm in college right now. And evolution has its way in basically almost every science there is. And, you know, it seems unfair that creation can find, ha has such a hard time finding its way, creationism has wow. such a hard time yeah. finding yeah, but its way. You know, astronomy is in all those schools, too. Is it unfair that astrology doesn't have its way, way finding its way into the classroom? Is that unfair? Is it unfair that we have a bias toward truth? Is it unfair that we have a bias toward things that are scientifically demonstrable? Is it unfair that we discriminate against batshit crazy ideas and that, that are, happen to be popular with somebody? And, and Stefan, thanks very much for perverting the intent of something I said earlier in the show. I did talk about how uh, you know, a, a group that has internal behavioral rules should not expect that it has a right to impose those on people outside its group. But I was not talking about what they teach in college. You have a right. It, it, to, to, in order to properly apply what I said, you need to know what your rights actually are. You have a right to your beliefs. You have a right to your own beliefs. You do not have a right to your own facts. The facts are whatever it is can actually be verified in the real world. Okay, That's so what the facts me... are. If you're finding evolution at every turn in college, it's because that's what the facts support. You have a right not to believe it, but you don't have a right to claim that just because something is written in your religion's holy book, that that is magically a fact. Okay, so, I mean, as I said earlier, gentry is just a small number. Yeah, one. Of scientists uh, who has supported it with his scientific evidence. And if they're, you know, throughout time, we do have other scientists who keep studying and coming up with other things. And therefore, if they can present this... Yes. The day, uh, the day, that, know, the day that they present sufficient evidence for their claims, that's the day that they get taught in schools. That's the day that they are then justified in, in, in you would be justified in believing them. Right. You believe them before then, you're just guessing. Wow. All right. Well, that was a long call. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's now, now all the lines are full and everybody's on hold, so let's see what we can get through.